demand knowing side how too. markets work this is going to catch a lot of people by surprise it is all in the run up where the money will be made hmm. my guess is the moment eth 2.0 happens half of the eth gets unlocked <laughs> and it all comes onto the market and the price will collapse it's typical yeah, and that's a short-term thing. It might be an overhang for a year. I mean, who the hell knows, right? But that's pretty obvious that this is the best single time. That's why I call it the greatest trade between now and and ETH 2.0. Everybody wants it to happen. They're going to lock up as much ETH as possible and get the yield. It's as simple as that. But when it comes out, chance ETH collapses. If you remember when Coinbase went public, Everyone's like, this is so good for the space. Everyone's going to know about it. What did it do? Marked the exact high in Bitcoin. Mm -hmm. And I've, I've mentioned that on Twitter beforehand. I'm like, this is what it's going to do. And it will. And this will probably mark the high in ETH. People trying to overthink everything. You know, ETH currently is a platform. You know, that, that that's how I think about it. You know, it's a platform from which to utilize their blockchain to transfer value to store value and to create applications on top so you know is elements of it money as we talked about yes are elements of store store of value yes are elements pure technology yes i mean it's everything so you know it kind of is still the vision that vitalik had of the kind of internet computer i mean it is that but that sounds a bit restrictive it's kind of the, I call it the, the internet of value, and you could call it the platform of value. And it doesn't, it's not exclusive because others can do similar things, but nothing has the scale, the scope that, that Ethereum currently has. Possible now to keep up. So you have to specialize. And, you know, I decided that I'm not interested in DeFi really, because I came from the financial system and I don't care about yield. It's, it's kind of boring to me. I, DeFi is very cool, right? I mean, I love it, love the whole concept. Number, but for me, I'm a financial markets guy. It's less exciting than complete disruption of business models that NFTs and social tokens are. Or even, you know, ETH the asset is. So I just kind of drifted away from that. You know, I still own a bunch of DeFi tokens, but I don't get involved in it. Um, and I think so that I think it's normal and it's good and it's healthy that people will coalesce around what they think is where they can move the dial or the biggest opportunity lies. We're basically all just taking bets, asset allocation bets of our time and our energy and our money. Coalescing around that, building communities and getting stuff done. Perfect. To see the Ethereum community fragment like this actually makes it stronger. Because you're creating pools of excellence and large pools of excellence around. Um, and I think that's great. They're not fighting with each other. They're just saying, hey, listen, you guys do that, we'll do this. Maybe we can meet up somewhere in the middle. I mean, that's brilliant. That's how to create, you know, a massive ecosystem. I mean, that, I think, again, just plays into the hand of the kind of Metcalfe's law network effects. If 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 you're now seeing all these nodes grouped together and create these super nodes around core elements of this, I think it's great. Because the space is going up 100x. And let's say Ethereum is 90% of that space right now and it ends up being 60% of that space, 60% of a $200 trillion market is a lot more than this. So of course it will not have its dominance over time. Like Bitcoin doesn't keep its dominance over time. It'll get splintered in different use cases. Other people will come in, there'll be great developments and all of these spaces will be, you know, a hundred times the size they are now. So I think people still think of this as a zero sum game and it comes from the early days of adoption because that's what networks are, these kind of behavioral incentive adoption models that, that the cryptocurrencies are, which is why they're so powerful. At first, it's like if you don't get adoption, you can see it being fought out in like the hex community and some of these kind of more kind of risky, not real projects. They're fighting to keep them alive, right? So they fight against other people to get adoption. Ethereum doesn't need to do that any longer, and actually nor does Bitcoin. And one of the reasons that you're alluding to why so many people have started moving across to Ethereum as an investment was actually the Bitcoin community. They kind of screwed it up. 
they were too toxic. There are some really smart people in that space and pe some people I really respect. Some people who say, listen, my view is I think over time, the monetary element is what I'm interested in. And I think Bitcoin best reflects that. And I think there's an opportunity for it to be a larger part of the global financial system. So I'm going to focus on that. I totally get it. Is there a probability that that Bitcoin is money in the end? There is a probability. So I get that path and that's their macro bet. But there's another group that was like, how dare you look at anything else? It's a shit coin, it's a scam, it's, <laughs> we hate you, all of this stuff, right? Which is the same stuff we were just talking about with these others is they took, they spent too long on a fight that was the past. And they should have said, fine, you guys do that. We're doing this. We'll probably develop some smart contracts in due course. We got the lightning layer. This is all great. Look at the space. It's all going up 100x. We're all going to get rich and we can change the world while we're doing it and probably solve a lot of inequality. But they did the opposite. And that was, that I think was a huge tactical error because people in the institutional space don't like to see that. And whether people like it or not, institutional adoption is part of the story. Yeah, there's a few people who throw out a few comments on Twitter, you know, some sort of ETH maximalist view, uh, you know, and they don't mind baiting a few people with laser eyes and stuff like that. So you can see that. But generally speaking, I found that people in the Ethereum ecosystem are too busy building businesses to fight with each other or to fight with anybody else. You don't even see kind of ETH versus Solana. It's like, oh, that's an interesting project over there. They seem to be growing quite fast. I better get on with what I'm doing here. <laughs> it's a very, 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 very different mentality. And it's because my guess is the Ethereum ecosystem is not a finished thing. Well, Bitcoin is finished, really. And that for it also becomes a bit boring. And I know this is terrible to say, but I understand the boomer coin thing because it's a bit like gold, right? <laughs> and Bitcoin's perfect. It's Bitcoin. I mean, it's absolutely phenomenal. Now, so it's a bit boring to talk about. So then the sovereign adoption, that is, that is interesting. Um, you know, there's the institutional adoption, I think is very interesting. Uh, the lightning layer is a payments layer. That's interesting. You know, there is some interesting stuff. It's just not as intuitively interesting as the amount of innovation that's coming out of this space. Do you think Ether will uh, flip in Bitcoin at some point in time? I think there's a serious probability that they will because a platform versus an asset, ten, you know, it tends just by the nature of what the Ethereum ecosystem is, it, it, it tends to attract more capital and have a higher market cap. So uh, yeah, it's definitely possible. Um, and you know, the adoption rates continue at the rate that it's going, it'll happen pretty quick. So people should own a bit of Bitcoin. There is an argument that you should never own Bitcoin. Because if you play it through and look at Bitcoin dominance or Bitcoin versus everything else, Bitcoin outperforms in bear markets and Ethereum and then going out the risk curve outperforms even more. So yeah, we're seeing the risk curve here now, which is some of the other, the newer, faster adoptions, let's say Solana, stuff like that, growing faster than Ethereum. Um, because they're at lower point in the cycle, you know, that less number of users, price goes up exponentially faster, NFT, stuff like that, when you're going further out the risk curve. So then let's say, so that's the bull market. You shouldn't own Bitcoin because it's going to underperform. And in a bear market, you should own stable coins. So in which case, why should you ever own Bitcoin? 